Housekeeping? Hey, wake up. Mm. You know what day it is? Today's Tinley. Oh. Good morning. Hey, Tinley. Good morning. Oh. Let's go to Tinley. Hey. Yay, it's the best day of the year. It's better than Christmas. And you get to wear the unicorn onesie today. No. Yeah, no, come on. No, wrong way, wrong way. Right come out. Way. Hey everyone, today is Saturday, October 9th, which is the biggest weekend of the year for us because it is the Tinley Park NARBC, or North American Reptile Breeders Conference. That, if you haven't heard of it, is essentially the biggest reptile expo in the United States. And we have been counting down the days for the longest time, and we can't wait to go. We are going to be buying some animals for our zoo, we're going to be buying some animals from great breeders to resell at our storefront, and today, Ed and I have to wear a unicorn onesie. I'm not looking forward to that part, but it's still gonna be a fun day, so let's go to the expo. But this isn't the convention center, this is a hotel room. Luckily, I've been practicing my magic, so let's apparate there. Ready? Yeah! It worked! We're here! Let's go inside! So we're looking for a red Aki monitor for our huge zoo exhibit. We're also looking for a couple of maybe monkey-tailed skinks yeah. to add to the exhibit. Uh, what are you looking for? I don't know, those are about the only things I could think yeah, of. Yeah, we want those. Maybe some hog noses for yeah. future breeding projects. I'm a little nervous though. Oh my god. <laughs> Trying not to bring attention to myself. Yeah. There's people wearing onesies. And I have the onesies here. Oh no, we have like <laughs> half an hour and we have to change into those. Yeah, I'm not looking uh, forward to that. I'm gonna be so embarrassed. <laughs> You're gonna be embarrassed. Mine rides up on me. Yours at least looks normal on you. So we just got in the show and Grant from Reptileverse, who's actually one of our Patreon supporters, was looking for some keeled lizards and we happen to have some in the store available. Nice. So this is actually the only animal that we've planned a meetup for at the show. <laughs> I don't know, did you get anything else here? Uh, I got a dwarf retail. Oh nice! nice. Yeah. Oh cool. You didn't have to bring us something by the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. I have lunch plans. Wow. Oh my gosh, there's Reese's in there. Thank yeah. you, Grant. Of course. Didn't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you have fun at the show. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks. All right, it's almost 10 o'clock. People are already going in. I have yet to change because it's taken us a while to get out. But now it's time. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> Got all the pins. All right, let's see how Ed looks. Oh my gosh. Hi. You're wearing it too. Yeah. Nice. Looks uh, good on you. It's a little it's, short. It's a little short in the sleeves, in the legs, in the crotch. Oh no. Uh, the bad thing is mine doesn't have pockets. Mine has pockets, but it rides <laughs> and rides. All right. Well, I have the pins. <laughs> Wish us luck, everyone. We've got one of the coolest onesies here so far. A shark! Yes. Want to show? My tail. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Keeps that uh, safe distance, you know. There you go. Yeah, right? This is a crazy show. There's people everywhere. We're going to try to get lunch. I don't know how this day is going to work, but look at all these people. It's nuts here. Going this way, okay. I left my pants with Mork Market. <laughs> so, what are we doing? I can't find my phone anywhere. I think I may have left it on the car on the way to the hotel when we took a break from the show. And that has my credit cards and my license in it. So we're gonna run back to the convention center and see if it's in the parking lot. Hopefully. All right, so it is, uh, what time is it? Where's the clock in this car? Oh, 4.42. 4.42. Um, do you wanna explain what we just did for the last two, two hours? hours? Almost three? <sighs> we're supposed to be at lunch. We had to leave the show on Saturday because we're gonna take a break and we went back to the hotel. To change out of our unicorn to onesies. To change out of the unicorn onesies. We are gonna meet up some friends with uh, friends with friends at lunch. I can't even talk. And then I noticed my phone was gone. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, well the last time we saw it was, I had set it on the top of the car in the Tinley parking lot to pack stuff up in the car and I must not have grabbed it with me or grabbed it to put it in and I didn't notice until we were already back at the hotel. Yeah. Then we so, found this. So then we saw this at the hotel. After going back to the Tinley Park, going back to the hotel, retracing all of our steps, we found this in the hotel parking lot. So somebody took my phone out of the case and left the case's carcass or behind. 
the case got run over and it popped off. That was not That's a super true. good case. That's true. That could have happened too. But thankfully we had our friends, Lyra, Mandy, and Nick helping us scour the parking lot trying to find my phone because it wasn't just my phone. Inside of the case is where I typically, probably not anymore, but it's where I keep my credit cards and my driver's license. Thankfully, Ed was able to, I don't know how you did it, but magic. He found the GPS location of my phone a few miles down the road. So we all drove down there and met. And the police stopped us Hey, are uh, you guys looking for a phone? Yeah, the police had it, but it's not in good shape, yeah. guys. But it had the cards and my driver's license with it. Yay. So this all got collected and again. All of our Tinley footage that's on there is still retrievable. All the selfies that I had been taking so far, I thought I lost them. I thought I lost other videos I had been the filming. The phone still works. Kind of works. Look at this. It's still, yeah, it's not in great shape. Take, take the back off. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it did not <gasps> uh, bear well. Yeah. It had my cards in the case. Like, that could have been really bad. So I had canceled the card, or I'd fr we froze the cards. Yep. And then, and then we found it. Yep. So I'm so sorry to... Yeah, we basically left everybody at two, going, we'll be back, we'll be back. Yeah. And now it's almost five, and I think the show ends at six, doesn't it? Five. It ends at five today. So... So we missed... So there were so many people who wanted to like pictures yeah. too, and I had to say, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to find my phone. So I'm gonna like calm down. Yep, we're gonna go back out to eat. Yep. And we're gonna go to the auction. Then we're going to the auction. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well now that we have the whole phone situation figured out, we have just enough time to make it to the Tinley auction tonight. Which so is right in that building. It's gonna be right in there. So basically all of the proceeds benefit or are donated to US Arc, which is the organization that fights for our rights to be able to keep reptiles. So it's for a great cause and we'll probably be able to snag some really good deals on reptiles. Who knows what we're gonna get? Yeah, we'll see. Let's go in. Let's go in! Let's start that at $100. 100 right here, 125 right here, 150 right here, 175, 200. 24, Dave, 250, 275, Earl, 300. 300, three and a quarter right here, 350, Earl, 375, Dave. They were 400, 400, Earl, 425, 450. 475, Dave, 500, Earl, five and a quarter. Five and a quarter, 550, 575, Dave, 600, Earl. They were 650. Dave, 1100, 1100, Dave, 2000. <laughs> 2,000. Anybody? Once? Twice? Sold. 2,000. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Uh, Emily, say, what are you doing? Um, so I mean, my, this is your beautiful phone that yep. we found. Isn't it really pretty? Yeah. At least you found it. Yeah, yeah we honestly. found it at least, but now it drops glass when you tap on it. <laughs> I don't think phones are supposed to do that. I mean, that's what my phone does. Well, oh, is it? Save it yeah. for Christmas. Use yeah. it for snow. I can make it. Maybe it's an ornament now. Crafts. <laughs> so, uh, what's going on over there? Well, you know, it's not really ever a true Tinley experience unless the ambulance shows up for something. That's true. Every I forgot single, about that. Every night so far, there has either been a what was that? Fire truck came a couple days fire ago. Fire truck the first two nights. First two nights fire truck. <laughs> Down ambulance. Ambulance tonight. It's Tinley. It's a good party at Tinley. Well, it's day two at the show, and between me Emily's wearing a hat. I'm wearing a hat. It's from a really cool breeder, too. Fire yeah. and Ice Reptiles. That's <laughs> yeah, a pretty sweet looking hat. Well, between yesterday, when we spent the majority of the day meeting our amazing fans in the hallway, and uh, the whole phone scenario, which I still don't have a phone, because we don't have time to go to Verizon before this. Nope, there's so, Tinley to do. So I'm winging it without a phone today. Anyway, between all of that, we have seen zero tables at this show so far. Yeah. Today, our goal is to film an entire reptile show, and so I'm trying to be incognito with a hat. Not just a reptile show, Tinley. Tinley, yeah, we're, we're trying to film Tinley. Yeah, we so we're gonna see how this goes today, but we're gonna really try to focus on filming and just showing you this experience, because as much as we want to spend the whole weekend meeting everybody, I know there's a lot of people who can't come to the show that would like to see the show virtually. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna head back in and see uh, what we can film. Sorry, everybody. We have so much to film. I'm kind of like head downing it until we have all of our footage, and then and then I'll go up and meet everybody. Okay, we filmed. 
three interviews in an hour yeah, and uh, just, just we, under an hour. Yeah. yeah, got distracted by buying some tricolor yeah, hugs. We had to go and buy stuff. It was worth it, worth the distraction. But now we need to film a bunch of other stuff. We need so. to film B footage and more B footage. Yeah, and people are coming in, so hopefully we don't get swamped. Let's go. Monkey Tails Kings. Oh my gosh. All right, Ed's taking a look to see which one he wants. Oh, that's a female, so it actually could go along, get along after a quarantine, of course, with our others. Here's the other one Ed might want, or we might get. They both look good. I mean, I mean, I do kind of like the the more dark to light versus yeah. that one, but this yeah. one's darker in general than that one is. Huh. So. That one seems a little bit calmer, too. Yeah. So maybe we'll go with her. Okay. Oh, we have another female for the zoo. Over here we have Carl and Tegan with South Tex Gex, and they have some incredible Lichianus geckos. So can you explain a little bit about your leeches and what you specialize in? Well, I've always been into reptiles for as far as I can remember, and uh, I've had all kinds of species, and gargoyles, leeches, and now Saracenorum are species that I work with. And this particular animal uh, is one of my Sakura lines. Sakura actually stands for cherry blossom in Japanese, only because they express a lot of really pink colors. Uh, I do have another line of, of granites, which are heavily patterned animals, and uh, I want to incorporate them both to produce a fully saturated red to pink Lichianus. And as you can see, see I'm getting pretty close. And I love your display oh, enclosures here. Yes. I love how it keeps it dark so that they stay fired up. Right. It's called a fire up box. It's it. For years I've displayed animals at shows and I was always frustrated because when I'm trying to show an animal like this and as soon as you uncover the table 20 minutes later they're all gray and washed out. Right. And I've always wanted to show what I actually have, and I was always frustrated. I said, how do, how do I keep that from happening? So I thought up of this idea, and I had a friend of mine that builds uh, display cases, and I said, can you build me this idea? And he made me a, a prototype, and it worked the whole weekend. I said, okay, I want you to make me some displays like this. As of now, I've been using this probably for six months. It minimizes their stress, and it makes them fire up. I mean, rarely do you go to a show and see an animal at its best like that. Yeah. So it's definitely a must for anybody who breeds any kind of rachidaclis or animals that fire, fire down, or even just to minimize stress. I didn't realize you came up with this idea. Yes, it's my idea. That's so cool, because I've seen these um, the fire-up boxes right. in several shows yes, now. Yes, I'm the original guy. And you came up with it. Yes. Wow, genius idea. They work beautifully, because you're right, they stay fired up the entire time. And you can really show off those true colors. If people are interested in learning more about what you breed, where could they go? Well, I have a Facebook, Carl J. Vargas. I do have a South Tex Gex uh, Facebook also. That That's one way through Messenger you can reach out to me. Mainly, it's the shows I've been at. It's where you can see my animals. Look, it's a wild dead cop. This is a real chunky snake. You don't need more isopods. Yes, they do. Chelsea with Nature Nut, and she has quite possibly the most interesting lizard at this entire show. This is a crested gecko Chihuahua gecko hybrid. So, can you tell us a little bit about him? Sure. So, this is one of three of the hybrids that I produced. The mom was a bicolor red, and the father was a Pine Island Chihuahua. So, I produced three males, and I absolutely adore them. I think that they're the best of both worlds, the crested and Chihuahua. I can't find anything wrong with them. The personality is fantastic. Their agility, their eat feeding response, everything. 
everything is just wonderful with these guys. You can really see both species in him. Like you can see the greens of the Chihua. You can see the crested gecko in like the head shape. It's just yeah. amazing how you can see both in one. So my question is, can they regrow their tails? So that's something, uh, none of them have dropped their tails and I don't know. <laughs> I did uh, speak with some of the, there's only a handful of other people that have uh, tried to, or that have set, successfully created hybrids. And I have heard that they do regenerate their tails, but I'm not sure. Yeah, here you go, under the light. But you can really see that green, that, that Jehua green kind of starting to come through. The other interesting thing is his eyes are green. And I'm not really sure where that came from because, you know, neither the Cresta Gecko or the Chihuahuas have green eyes. So that's something that, you know, is pretty fascinating to me. And you breed other species of geckos too. So where can people go if they want to learn more about what you breed? Oh, sure. Um, I'm Nature Nut. Um, I'm mostly on Instagram, at NatureNut81. And then I also have geckos for sale on Morph Market. I breed a variety of Cresta Geckos, a Gargoyles. I have a group of Pine Islands and a separate group of um, mainland Chihuahua set up now. I want to, of course, make some pure bloods as well. Try to do a little variety. I get to buy a bunch of uh, ice pods, right? Well, I figured because you bought isopods, I can oh. buy two hog noses. You bought tricolors earlier. That doesn't count. The tricolors were earlier, didn't count. You bought isopods, so now it's my turn to buy a pair of hog That's noses. Not fair at all. Yep. Alright, what'd you just buy? Well, you bought those hog noses when my ice pods didn't count for your hog noses, so I got beauty snakes. Oh, yeah, nice. I one up you. So these are um, rubber boas. Rubber boas are awesome. They're one of um, only two boa species native to the U.S. And, um, you know, they're called rubber boas because some people think they look like rubber. I know a lot of people think they look like worms. They've got really small, really soft scales, so their texture is like fairly unique among snakes. And another thing super unique about them is that they need cooler temperatures. So they're a pretty unique and cool species and I just love the look of them and the feel of them. Whistler reptiles and he has and works with an amazing species of snake that you don't get to see too often and I'm really excited to learn about. So what are these? These are Angolan pythons. These are from Africa. They look like a ball python but they're not at all. They don't have any balling tendencies whatsoever. They're just a beautiful brown and cream color. They get a little bit bigger than a ball python. They'll get in this five to six foot range and they are amazing. I mean this is the second time I've produced these. These are your babies? These are, well, I sold these yesterday to Casey Cannon and I had to go back and borrow them for the video. For this, you had to run and grab I them for this. I had to repossess this. them for just a few minutes. I'm so glad you did though because these are stunning. Do they always have such amazing contrast? They and always do. They do, okay. And then as an adult, they will get a little bit lighter brown, but they still keep that, I, I think it's like a mahogany brown color. I yeah, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. How are they um, temperament wise? Perfect, just they, like this. They, they the seem time. amazing, yep. yeah. Why don't more people have Angolan pythons? They were. They were fairly popular years ago. The expense was kind of crazy back then. They've come down some. How much do they typically go for nowadays? These are $1,000 a piece. Okay, well I mean it's worth it for an incredible snake like they this. They are neat. They have like pretty blunt little heads, don't they? They look, if you took the pigment away, it would look just like a ball python. Yeah. Their head looks exactly like a ball python. They have the beady scales, that's untypical for most snakes. Yep. And these guys are much more active than a ball python. I love that they're like, the yellows are outlined in black. Oh, you're right, wow. They are amazing. Are you planning more uh, clutches in the future? 
Reptiles. Yes. Awesome. So where can people go if they want to learn more? Travis Whistler Reptiles. Awesome. It's the last 45 minutes of the show and we're trying to buy a bunch of stuff because now is when we can get wholesale on products for our store. Yeah, like they... we already get stuff through VE. Okay. You're good. And instead of uh, buying it and then having it shipped to us, we're just going to take stuff home. Yeah, then they don't have to bring it back yeah. and we can just have it in stock. It's yeah. great. I'm so sorry for the fans who are trying to meet us right now. We only have so much time before the, the whole thing closes down. So yes. we have to go buy and stuff for our this. store. We need this for inventory. <laughs> okay, so. Let's go. Okay, goodbye. All right, well, I had to go get Reptile Basics stuff and I left Emily alone, but I don't know where she is. Uh-oh. What did you do? Nothing, look that way. What? There's nothing that way. What? <sighs> well, it is now Monday and we are exhausted. I don't think I could do a third day at the show. I think I would just die. But it was an amazing show, some incredible people, wonderful animals and products, and we picked up a lot of stuff. So we figured we would show you what we're going home with. Let's start with the animals that Ed and I got for ourselves, and then we'll show you uh, just kind of briefly what we got for our store. First and foremost, we got a pair of tricolor hog noses from Travis Whistler Reptiles. Look at these two. They're just teeny little stinkers right now. I guess they're eating frozen thawed mice, which is great. And the reason why we got them is because these these two are related and our pair at home is related so we can swap the males and have two unrelated pairs in the end. So uh, just for breeding and genetic di diversity we got these. Then we also got some Amazonian polka dot frogs for the zoo and these frogs are super cool because I mean yes they do have polka dots as their name implies but they glow under a black light so if you put a black light on them they glow back it's so cool so we're gonna we had one empty frog enclosure in the zoo we were trying to figure out what species to put in it we saw these and it's like we, we had to so now we can put yeah. a black light next to them and then kids in our zoo can shine it it'll be awesome and as you saw got some isopods we won't really yep. go into them but he got some zebras some giant stuff some oreo crumble stuff and i got another pair of hog noses these are and i didn't pay exactly what's on the on the tag we got a deal on them I, we, we really i wouldn't have anyway these are conda het lavender hog noses so we can produce some lavenders in the future look at this little sweetie yep. definitely a male definitely oh uh, yeah i mean we did kind of look there too but yep definitely a male see that oh, yeah. long tail yep so we figured we would uh branch out a little bit more since we really want to produce lavenders and we'd get this pair because since both of them are condas and het lavender, they have the small chance of producing a super conda lavender. So we're gonna raise them up and this will be a, a future project. Next, new we project. got a new project, yes. This is a pair of Chinese beauty snakes. Look at them, they are stunning. Stunning, I'll move their card. We saw these, it's a sub-adult pair, male and female. The female is the bigger one right here. And we enjoy our Vietnamese blue beauties so much that we've been wanting to kind of branch out into other blue beauties, or other, other beauty snakes. So we found these and couldn't pass them up. So we're gonna hopefully breed these in the future too. And the last thing we got for ourselves is uh, wild caught actually, which is why I'm saving them till the end. So these are monkey tail skinks, or a pair of uh, prehensile tail skinks. We got these because we have two females in our zoo and it's a huge cage at the zoo. It's six by three by seven feet and they are social animals so hopefully they get along. I mean these two we're gonna have to quarantine and treat for parasites because they're wild caught but our end goal is to have a group of four in the zoo enclosure and then hopefully breed them in the zoo. So we have to quarantine, do all the wild caught stuff first and then we'll introduce them. Next, let's show you what we got for our store. First, we got some tarantulas. These are some, what was it, Cuban bronze? Cuban bronze tarantulas. Cuban bronze tarantulas. Or... We have some green bottle blues that we're bringing back to the store. Basically, we found some sizable tarantulas and our customers have been looking for some bigger ones because they're a little bit more like established. They're not as fragile as little slings. So we were able to find some at the show for them. Next, we got some morning geckos because those have also been highly sought after by people visiting our store, so we got some from Josh 
Josh's frogs. They always have really nice lizards and frogs and everything. So we'll go home with some little morning geckos. And we got some snakes for our store. So this is a hypo boa, hypo motley boa constrictor. We have a sun glow that we're gonna be bringing to our, our store. And we've got some ball pythons. We've got a pinstripe candino here. I really like banana stuff, as you all know, so I bought a lot of bananas. Fun fact, in case you don't know this, coral glow is the same thing as banana in ball pythons. There was just debate on who had it imported first and therefore who got to name it. So if you see coral glow, it's the same thing as banana, just from a different strain. We also got some milk snakes for our store for the first time. I think people are really gonna like milk snakes and these were just gorgeous, so we had to pick some up. We've got some tangerine hondurans, we've got some ghost hondurans, and we have some regular Sinaloan milk snakes here. So pretty. And I actually had pre-arranged with our friend Kathy who had some animals that she was wholesaling out. We met at the show and we picked up a beautiful blood python. It'll be kind of hard. I don't want to take the tape off of everything yeah. here. We have a pied ball python, which is beautiful. I've got some nice white over there. And we got from Kathy a pair, what was supposed to be a pair of porn snakes, and she raised them up and realized they were both males. Yeah. So she didn't need them. And so uh, they're really handleable though. So she's been working with them a lot. So he also gonna, likes his paper towel. He loves his paper towel. Yeah. That's his favorite paper towel. <laughs> so we're going to be able to find them really good homes at our facility, I think. Really good like family homes with yeah. how friendly they are. And last but not least, we are going home with four Lichionis geckos. Hooray! I'm pretty Aww. excited about these. I think we're gonna pick one and keep it for ourselves. Yeah, there's a really pretty one in there. Yeah, which one is that I think really? I it's this one. Oh, baby lychees! Oh my gosh. We've only gotten ours, our two, we got as adults already, yeah. so I'm not used to this stage. They're so cute though. <laughs> it's like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was sleeping and now I'm in someone's hands. <laughs> uh, again, we're gonna keep one of them and the rest we'll probably find just good homes for through our store. And yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. As far as products go, we went home or we're going home with some feeders. The thing I'm most excited for though are these creature care cards because this is something we're going to be implementing in our store. These are made by a friend of ours actually in North Dakota and creature care cards are just little business card sized care guides for all sorts of different species. She currently has them for 30 different species and it goes over humidity and diet and um, housing and substrates, everything on the back of a card with a QR code with or a website with additional information of that species. So what we're gonna use these for is whenever we sell an animal in our store, we will give the customer a creature care card so they have all the information in a nutshell in a card that they can bring home with them so that we feel more comfortable, that they feel more prepared to properly take care of that animal. Those are gonna be really good information for our staff. Yes, we're gonna use this as a training uh, guide for our staff actually. So our friend Sari makes these. They actually, you can buy the, a book full of the 30 cards that she currently has. It's just uh, creaturecarecards.com. So go check it out. Again, we recommend them highly because they have a lot of great care information on those cards. And lastly, I mean, that's everything that we're going home with, but we wanted- Everything? Yeah, yes, there's a lot of animals that we're going home with. I'm sorry, staff, that you're gonna have to set them all up. Yeah. So anyway, I did want to spend a couple of minutes here just talking about how the show went and something I want to apologize for. Between the unicorn onesie shenanigans and our phone situation, which I still don't have a phone, yep. but that's okay, we'll figure that out later. We had so much fun, first off, meeting everybody on Saturday. That was a blast, just chatting with all of you and meeting you in person but we didn't get any time to go to the show at all on Saturday, which is fine, but we were just a little behind on Sunday with filming. We had to buy stuff for our store. We wanted to buy stuff for our own collection. And there were some families that we kind of had to quickly, as we were running through the show yesterday, had to say, hi, I'm sorry, we're so busy, and then just kind of run away. And we would have loved to meet everybody and have conversations with all of you. So if you're one of those people that we couldn't talk to, I'm so sorry, we really wanted to, but we had like an hour and we hadn't bought any animals quite yet. So we were running around like madmen. And there was one person in particular, Abigail, at this show, who kind of came up to us and just said, hey, I have a card for you, here you go. And she saw that we were busy, and so she handed it to us and walked away. So we opened this up in the hotel, we read this amazing letter that Abigail had written, and 
Abigail, you are too, too nice is all I'm gonna say. I'm so sorry we didn't really get to talk to you or as quite a few other families at the show yesterday because of how behind we were and how hectic things were, but we love you all. So thank you so much for all the support and hopefully we can talk to you at another show where it isn't as crazy. But yeah, without rambling too much, uh, I just wanted to show you everything we're going home with. I want to thank everybody that came in onesies so that we didn't feel alone and it was a huge success, I would say, the show, the onesies, just everything except for my phone. But as always, we want to thank our amazing Patreon backers whose funds help all the new animals that were dropped off at our shop while we were gone for this weekend, apparently. I guess there's a lot more animals for Adoption Island for us to meet when we get back. We also want to thank our staff for watching the store for us for four days while we were gone. That's the longest they've ever been by themselves, and they did an amazing job. But yes, thank you everybody who also met us at the show, and thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Lee Chi!